All right. It's been 10 something hours of gameplay coming. It's been, I don't even know how to intro this. Today we finished what we started and I don't know what crew is level seven. Well, guess there's not much else to do but to hit the button. Final city. Actually, I had a decent there soon. I got random complaints, apparently, that I'm not being elitist enough to use a long crosshair, so I'm using short crosshair now. Because apparently that's going to make the game very much harder. It's really, it's really hard right now. I'm having such a hard time just lining up all these missiles. I'm having such a hard time getting my hand on that slaughter without free firing. That was just bullshit. Now this is just my aim sucking. There we go. Yes. The aim is very much harder than it was before. Really. Mention out of the way. Did I ever put IRST back on this thing? Uh oh. I don't think I see an IRST in the bottom left position. I may have fucked that up. I think I just remembered that I now oh, are out of time. Um Kiva. You did your jobs. You deserve. Okay, that's not. Now before we start, we do a little bit of something. We do that. Da, 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 da. Zimlin. Do I not have Imlin? Oh, that's unfortunate. Alright. No free intel. Uh, I should have landed. There's our three ends, baby. Tyler, you create handles the fans that you withdraw all Ramadi ships ship singular correction. We cannot comply with this order, we only have one ship. <laughs> you have eight hours. Destroy the city by a nuclear strike. I really, I really mm, yeah, sure. <laughs> Give me that sound. Give me that sound, baby. Give me that sound, baby. Just double check the Yep. Yeah. It begins. I should have played this through at normal speed. Whatever. Planning to use this weapon to destroy Akiva. Poor man is absolutely terrified and insisted again and again that everyone here is in grave danger. The new weapons are ballistic missiles. An unparalleled trajectory correction system that allows it to strike targets as far as 2,000 kilometers away. That's the pain in the ass. This would be doable without me putting two R3Ns into this, if not for the fact that they can land 2,000 instead of 1,500 away. I, I, I could, if they land it within 1,500, I can just get X15 them, but... And I could use a strat where I get up, like I put a bunch of engines on the Sebastopol to get it up to like the 180 range of speed where it's kind of passable and I just take a risk and run at them, but then the run's complete RNG at that point. So... Um... Yeah. 
I'm totally gonna get complaints that I used our three hands. I only used two, okay. <laughs> Seize fish and strike target in 10 minutes. And the missiles are to be delivered to Grat on two specially made carrier cruisers. It's time to fight the typhoons. Yeah, at least two of them are going to start from out of range. I like how my circles on the map are perfect. Ah, oh, yes. Look at this. I know what I'm doing. Intercept the miscarriers. How many? How many strike groups? Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck. Oh, this is going to be a long day. This is going to be a long day. Uh. Actually joking. A lot of triumphants. <laughs> he brought nothing because I asked for all the spare parts instead. The funny part is, I have so many nukes already, it doesn't really matter about all of these. <laughs> Wasp. <laughs> the most useless possible ship. And he also. Total War. <sighs> okay. Ark is likely to be a source. If they come from Ark and Masad, I'll literally need to fight them both with our three ends. If they come from Zephy, I can maybe get away with fighting them with the X-15s. If they come from Uruk, I'll probably use the R3. There's also damage to repair. Alright, here's where we get real. First up, we take this bitch. Me casually. The funny part is, if I, if I get up and leave Kiva with this inventory, I'm literally picking up like all these parts from all these ships. I am literally carrying like a hundred thousand tons of ship on the back of this fastball, and it is literally just not affected at all. It's the funniest part about this. Well, I quite literally have access to every possible part I could want to a Sebastopol, except for, like, a, a Nadir or something. Like, but Nadir is literally removed, basically, at this point. I forget if Nadirs are in the files, or if Nadirs were fully removed. I think they were, I think they still exist in the files. That makes sense, there's some pre-release shit like the drones and whatnot. I got have any parts that is on a ship in the game I could possibly want, except for uh, trade ship antennas and wheels. I don't have option to either of those, which is unfortunate. Because trade ship antennas look cool as hell. Watch me accidentally fucking sell some at the end of this. The other interesting fact is, uh, Sevastopol actually doesn't count as your flagship anymore in, uh, post -Kiva. So, ironically, losing Sevastopol, I don't think, will end us the game. If it happens. That said, uh... Obviously, there's no way to win the game if we don't have a ship, so can't actually kill anything, and if they run out of fuel in the desert, they don't actually crash and die, they just sit there, so it's not actually a way if we're dead to kill them, really, unless there's a nuke in there. That'd be kind of funny if that's how this ends. I really doubt that. It's funny, all that time collecting hundreds of thousands of gold and ship parts, 
And I have everything I want suddenly anyways. This part takes forever. So, here's this tactic. First, we land. We need to find a way to get a lot of repair bonus. Like, a lot. It's an interesting fact, I've done this before. Uh, but the recording software died and I only recorded Kiva. So I know kind of how to do this. But this time, we don't actually have as much repair bonus available. I think I can get, like, 200 and that's it. That time I had, like, 500. Which might make this strat not work. So the idea is we have spare parts which accelerate repair time. We have a lot of them, so we can repair as many times as we want, really. The idea is if we can get a mega repair bonus, you can actually repair a missile in 15 minutes, even in hard. And that means that you're only rate limited by your missile launch speed, and it's basically the equivalent, it basically turns Sebastopol into a typhoon. Like, you basically have an endless amount of missile launch capability. Now, the typhoon AI is kind of garbage, so you don't even need all those missiles, but that's what I think. I'm going for 132 or 3366. Yeah, it's 90 it's 222. Ah, oh, I lost this one leg. I'm gonna get the left leg in. That's gonna suck. It's too bad I can't get that 250 though. <laughs> you know, there isn't anything technically saying I'm not allowed to put a tendril on. Put a long piece of landing gear, kinda like a tendril. Parking off the ship, it still counts as a part of the ship's hitbox. I could like make a tendril going off the right side of the ship, dropping down into the 252 spot. And get a shit ton of repair bonus. That's kind of cheesy, so I'm not doing that. Okay. Come on. Come on, landing here, I believe in you. This is kind of comedic as hell. Um, the most modern variation? Yes. Okay, I need IRST. Um, I never put IRST back on after things, and that's actually really important for later on. Um, I think it goes here. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Hmm. There's a blocked APS. Okay. Where does the other IRST go? Oh, it's there. Okay, is there anywhere else I can slide one in? Could probably put one in... Oh, there's one here as well. Okay, it'll it'll be alright. Give us some redundancy. Yeah, and as if you had observed, that's a 0.5 hour repair. Um, because we have 534 plus we have the parts, so it's like a very stupidly fast repair. And yeah, the idea is we can now basically use our entire stock of nuclear missiles as if they were on the ship. It just requires a lot of mi it requires a lot of micro because you have to keep going in and out of the thing uh, repeatedly. But it's doable. I could exploit the sensors. No, I can't actually place it there. It's nowhere actually on armor, is there? Oh, I can just place it here. Should I do that? It's pretty cheesy. It's pretty cheesy, but I could do it. It'd be nice to have a redundant sensor. But I think it's absolutely fucking hilarious is the best part if I do that. And it'll, it'll, eat, it'll eat damage if, if, if anything. I'm gonna do that. It's too funny. It's too funny not to do. <laughs> so if you don't know... Oh, oh, actually, you know what? Oh my god, gonna, it's gonna block APS. <laughs> I can do one here, though. That's too funny. I'm not... I'm not... I'm. There's no way I'm not doing that. <laughs> So if you don't know, it says pow no power, but the funniest, stupidest part of how this game works, right? Like, dumb shit. 
uh, when you get back on the strat map, it doesn't care. It just gives you the sensors. You can actually, like, have them, like, sitting on top of armor. It's the, <laughs> the, the... In all likelihood, this won't actually change anything, but I really... Um, if I'm gonna fight three strat groups, I really need a backup IRST in case the top ones get knocked off. Anyways, um... Right, let's change one of the A100s to an R3 as I intended. Because those spawn positions just suck. So I have two R3s. These are basically only to head cap the Typhons and give them. I brought them all the way from the beginning, so... Where the hell is... Oh, there. How many missiles do I have? 12, 15 PMs. Can't read the other ones very well. It's like tiny. Okay, I have 6 15Ns. Oh, that's more of the teams. Oh, they're all they're all missorted, bro. I don't actually have that many. Oh, I have like thirty something A one hundreds though. Pog. All right, that works. A one hundreds are probably the most important. Uh, yeah, and you see, it literally took I think half an hour to add. Yeah, it's one hour to add the missile. Uh. Yes, hang on. I was trying to remember if we cancel it out. Like, I just sit there instead now. Alright. Oh, it's only one strike group. Okay. Alright then. Oh, I forgot the hairy part. I have to take the radar dish off. Uh, reason I want to take the radar dish Or, should I take the radar dish off? Because I'm going to be radar silent for that bit. Yeah, I'll take it off and I'll, I'll put it on before I take off again. Reason behind that is so that uh, my fire control radars, uh, I my two times elint range allows me to see any of the strike groups before, uh, before their elints see my fire control radar. All right, here's the hairy part. You're not playing the game as intended. Still have 999 parts. Let's go. Fuel max itself out. Parts of your fucking anxiety. It can still get screwed if you, if both Typhons attack you at the very same time. There's no way at all you can stop them. There we go. It's all down to this, baby. Two minutes. One minute. Any second now? There he is. <laughs> I didn't even check the clock, I just knew where it was gonna come. Alright, let's go. Okay, that's coming from Bochum. Yep, that's out of KH15 range. Radar dies. Okay. Let's give it a go. They're just doing their testing nuke, so now we're gonna fucking send on them. Sup, bitch. My turn. Typhoon, come on. Get close, get close, get close. Oh, I didn't get close. Ah! Ah! The sprints hit the grip. <laughs> War crime? I don't care. Okay, um... So the Typhoon's alive. The Titans might not actually even be singed from that range. Oh, this is a fucking tough call. So I have one R3M left. So I have the option of throwing another one at him. I have the option of loading a... a... Oh shit, I'm an idiot. I didn't start repairing. Uh, I have the option of... I should have been started repairing the moment I launched that a A100. I did a really big stupid there. I can take off and throw a KH-15 at him, but it's kind of risky. I think I'm going to use the R3. And then on the next Typhoon, I'll take off and run at him. And hope that his timer is longer than five hours. I need an A100. Is that or I spend just a few hours in risk leaving Kiva to hit this this one with, a, with an 8K15 load? That's really risky. I 
think that's too risky to do. Hang on. How far away beyond the circle is he? How, how far do I actually have to go if I want to hit him? It'll take two hours. Two and a half, really, if you think about everything combined. I'll be out for four hours, basically, all things considered. Considering the initial load, come back, load up. It's such a fucking risk. I'll do it. See what I mean by the missile repair time, though? 0.3 hours for two missiles. Five hours, 15 minutes. One could have been rounded down, but this literally means that I'm repairing a missile every... 20? Two, 10. Yeah, it is 10. Every 10 minutes, I load a missile. Um, which means that I'm actually rate limited by the Sevastopol's own uh, limitations on firing. Yeah, fuck it. I don't like doing this. I really don't like doing this. One. Go on, two. Landed. Uh, the rain's causing lag. Yay! This game. Hopefully, those KH-15s kill them. If it doesn't, we'll have time anyways uh, before they repair. Two, two, there's no way two of KH-15s doesn't fuck them up. That's the Typhoon. It's going over him. Damn it. More stage damage, hopefully. Come on, second one, just hit him and flip him, please. Typhoon. It's going over him again. Pile drive. Alright. The Typhoon is in the fireball. It might be dead. It had time to destroy the gear. It's not dead. Okay, then. 
I could try and risk another cage 15 strike, which will kill them, but I think it's I think it's damaged enough at this point with that proximity. <laughs> I already could have sent one. I'll take another risk. I really don't like doing this. I really don't like leaving Kiva. Because they can throw out the other one could throw a missile in behind me, and I think the logic is if the if the nuclear missile hits, they do send full send. They they should be fucked up, but I honestly just want them dead. Scares alive now. Put it in the docks. The big thing is it's a combination of the parts in the, in the repair bonus. Like without 500% it'd be 5 times longer, so 10 minutes would become 50 minutes. So it'd literally take me an hour. It would take me an hour and a half to fill both tubes. An hour and 40 minutes, but. That's the reason I have to keep doing these landings. Their sprints are exhausted, so there's not a way in hell that entire group doesn't die when those 15 set. Trying to be quick. I'm trying to be quick and I put too much weight in the left landing gear. Too quickly. I probably could have tapped and it would have been repairable, but. And then the heel of the, if you could say it, call it that, of the claw hitting the ground, that's when the weight's really starting to actually be put on the ground. Uh, otherwise, if you actually just, the moment this touches, you drop it, it, it uh, the ship suddenly falls, and then 40,000 tons of weight meets this claw with, well, 9.1 meter second, second, 9.1 meter second velocity. It's a lot of energy that suddenly gets transferred, and then the heel breaks. Or in this case, I think the claw, the claw got bent back too quickly and it snapped, and then suddenly the knee of the claw hit the wall, and then it kind of just cascaded from there. Yeah, let's just get the R3 back in. I swear to God, if it fucking doesn't die and I have to load another R3. Let's say 100s. I have so many A100s, dude. The fiber is like combined. I have 10,000 tons of nuclear missiles. <laughs> This is a Kiva moment. 
It's accurate for being a Kiwa, to be fair. It is a nuclear weapon stockpile, right? Oh. Oh, neat. I guess... I guess the missile carrier died somehow? The group is still alive. They moved on. That's the concerning thing. Alright, we wait for the second one. Not that. Not that. Come on. Oh wait, that means they're airborne. No, it's 1500. Oh yeah, that means I can use my uh, cage 15. Alright, well. Um, I don't like that. This is how much I don't like that. Everybody's having a party in Kiva, and then they just see the, the Sevastopol taking off and landing. Like, what are you doing? Alright, now I can just repair it to the standard set. It's a 15P, but, you know, I need to get rid of those anyways. And right now. Now, that is comedic. How quickly I reload missiles. That's something you can regularly do uh, with missile carriers in uh, in normal mode. That's how much faster repairs are. And normally, you don't even really need to land. You can do stupid shit like this. Alright, three PNs should be able to weed them out. I turned their seekers on. I found them. They're landed. Is this a typhoon group? I think this is the normal strike group. Whoa, this is easy. APS, that means it's a nomad. Uh yeah, I think this is the normal strike group. Aw, and I was hoping I got a fight. I was expecting these guys to do a less stupid move and, like, actually push me suddenly, and I'd have to, like, defend Kiva, but no, they just kind of sat here and took it, so I just have an endgame strike group to nuke. The problem is now... They have no radars. Oh, uh, yeah. They'll be there for a while. Wait, what am I not doing? I need to get my AR-3 back on. Makes you wonder where the last strike group is. I mean, missile carrier is. I think I might go get into a fight with them for funsies. Depending on how long this guy shows up. Let me put a marker down so I can see what time it is. I had 100 hours. I'll obliterate the net. This strike group. Come on, Miss Care. Let me kill you so I can go fight the strike group. Hello? They all went to the 1500 kilometer ones, really? Okay then. Mm, they're only just now landing, but I can just. Cage 15. You know what's funny is I never needed to use the R3Ns this, this run. I was really considering just using the H-15s to avoid people screaming in my ear, Oh, you're using R-3Ns, blah, blah, blah. I really didn't need to. I really didn't need to even use the R-3Ns. They, they, they made no difference. Which is just based, if you ask me. That just means that this further proves that this could be done without anything special. It really is just Sevastopol. Alright, 15N. Hello. Oh, that isn't good to hear. I'm going to load an A. I'm going to load another A100N. I heard that. I'm not sure if you heard that, but that was the nuke siren at the end of that. All right, 
So if I heard the nuke siren just now, we will get him his missile right. Three. So, okay, no, no. <laughs> it got there a little quicker. I forgot he said 1,500 kilometers. Let's go in defensive mode. Let's just load up another. Load up another A100 in case he is salvoing. jamming. Why are they jamming? I don't know why they're jamming. They're running at me, that's why they're jamming. Is, are they not there? No, they are here. What's running at me? That is an incapacitated typhoon. Nice. All the missile tubes are on fire. <laughs> okay, what is this coming at me? Strike group. Oh, it's the strike group from earlier. Why'd they come from this angle? Shit, 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 shit. I need to get out of Kiva so they don't nuke Kiva. Unfortunate. I was hoping for a different route path to this happening. Sup, bitches. Oh, it's just, it's the remnants of the first nuclear group. Ha! <laughs> Get sent! Oh, they're gone. Okay. Let's load up an A100 and a KH-15, and let's just send them. I think that's the remnants of the uh, first Typhoon I killed, the uh, accompanying group. They count as a strike group once they're killed. Once the Typhoon is killed. Oh, right. I gotta land in the docks. Right, sure, <sighs> I should have known something was up when they didn't launch missiles before reaching, but... See the strike groups went down one, so it's just this uh, missile carrier group and this strike group. Oh, that's really fucking bad. That's really fucking bad. That's really fucking bad. That's really fucking bad. Because really they'll actually want. That's the actual strike group. The actual strike group has uh, its logic in Kiva is it will actually pre-fire its missiles regardless if you're there or not. They'll try and glass Kiva. Uh, I'll load up an A100M, because it won't take long. Uh, 
and I'll try and take off. I'll get in the head first battle, why not? Okay, cool. Why not go for a fight with him? Fuck it. Why not have a little bit of thematicness? I am gonna use secondary secondaries, but why not use energy? It was too easy anyways. shoot his corpse for long enough. Alright. You know what? Why not? Why shouldn't I get go beat him up in person? It'll take 10 hours, that's why. Oh. I actually killed the Typhoon. Hmm. Interesting. Oh. You wanna nuke me? I say no to that. Let me actually... There we go. Let the missile get ahead of that. Uh oh. This isn't good. I'll play the jammer game, fuck you. They might actually have enough missiles. I uh I'm gonna get nuked. Or not. Pog. I got under their missile range. I'm not using incendiaries on the main battery. I have seven. That's why. Destroyed all of your friends. Get the fuck over here. Stop that. Let me chase you. Bruh. I wanna ram him. I wanna ram him. But he's running away from me. Maybe I just set him on fire and the engines go out. Or I'll just kill it. That'll happen too. Uh, and with that, we are done. We did it. Oh, that took too long. I didn't even use the second Earth run. I didn't even need to use the first one. I could have just flown out.
And to that I say, to everybody who says Sevastopol is a shit flagship, you can officially suck it. really over. We're really here. Honestly, that was a pretty short endgame. I was expecting a bit more, but they kind of just blundered themselves all into like the worst cities possible. And they really didn't attack at one. They, huh. but that is the way of endgame. It can be pretty brutal. And there's also just the fact I just, I've done this so many times. I know what I'm doing. We really did it. Sevastopol alone with one R3N. If you really want to say that. I, I, I can't wait for somebody to fucking complain in the comments that I used R3Ns. Even though it's been in the description of every episode until now. And it happened right at the start. There's a lot of complaints. Um, I don't know. I'll redo it without the R3s. But to be continued. Yeah, that's... That's honestly pretty... Yeah, I'm going to have to fucking do this in 116. Ah, yeah... Really did it. Sevastopol, no armor, no hull. I didn't even need those extra IRSTs that I kind of goofed with. No armor, no hull edits. Just adding a bunch of impuls on. What do I do? Add a bunch of impuls on, add some APS on. And all the places that already existed under the armor. Rejigged a little bit of ammo. Added a D30. Nothing big. Just Sevastopol. She needs a little bit of work to work, yeah. The base variant kind of can be a bit, hmm. But you give her the slightest amount of touches and, uh... Look how far she takes you. Um, I may as well, in detail, go over uh, what the refit kind of looks like. Um, this won't be a one-for-one. One. Usually whenever I do it in-game, it's a bit different every time because I'm just doing it off of memory. But this is a good example of what uh, this variant of Sevastopol kind of looks like. This is like over one way you can do it. Um, obviously, I think this was different in the campaign, right? This is kind of a different way. Oh, yeah, this is, this is like with... This is a more reworked one with generators and whatnot. This one uses more efficient generator and crew layout. Um, but you have a large APS array, basically, which basically turns into a force shield. You have D30 goes here. Vimple's kind of just added around. Um, extra ammo comes from these three racks, I think, for the extra Vimple's. Uh, I think there was an. I think it was somewhere else. Oh, yeah. These racks. Oh, yeah. One of the biggest things changed about Sebastopol is uh, there's normally an ammo rack here next to the Vimple. Take that out. Take that out. This is center mass. So the AI, when they're below you, they'll shoot here with AP and Zeniths also. And they'll pile drive. They'll pile drive the fucking ammo rack and it'll blow up or they'll just shoot it and it'll eventually go through the armor and blow up. And it's just annoying because it sets everything on fire and it's just bleh. And also it's center mass, so th they'll shoot that hole in the armor as well. Um, uh, what other necessary things? Uh, what's really important about fastball refitting? Really, it's just adding those vimples where they're missing. Like I know this is an empty slot on the normal Seva, right? Um, it's mostly just adding a bigger Vimple battery where they're missing, and uh, mainly just this fix. Everything else is just something you can do on your own. It's like, this is what this Seva uh, looks like. Where's the layout? And there's, where's the normal Sevastopol? 
That's Sephastopol. There's Sephastopol. That's what normal Seva looks like. So it's not much different, but the biggest thing is these spots here between the field tanks are unused. They're like <laughs> probably some of your best spots in the entire ship to put things. Obviously, there's no APS. That's one of the biggest things you can do to help it in 115 is put APS under the armor. And this Amorak is what I mentioned. You move it over here, and then you take this Vimple, put it here. You put a D30 here. That'll give you a little bit more speed. It'll give you two kilometers an hour to mount all the weight you want that you can really get. It'll, that'll handle everything you need. Um, you know, obviously, you have Vimple here. These generators, I think, get rejigged and moved in so that you can get more Vimple battery. The one I had, in, I think, was actually less of an extensive refit, but feel free to screenshot and look up close. Uh, and yeah. That's it. We did it.